In this video, I'm going to be outlining what an MMI is, some common questions that you might have about it, and what you can expect to see from it. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sebastian and I'm a first year medical student from the University of Sydney. So I'm going to be going through a lot of content in this video. I've linked timestamps to all the sections in the description below, so check out that. So we're talking about MMIs today, and a lot of you may have heard this term been thrown around. Uh, you might have just finished your GAMSAT and are approaching that interview time, and you've been offered an interview, and most likely it's going to be an MMI. So what exactly is it? Um, MMI stands for multiple mini interviews and it's a series of stations in which you go into different scenarios um, each completely independent of each other each with a different examiner and they're going to ask you a different set of questions uh, there's usually about six to ten different stations and they last they could last five minutes they could last 12 minutes so that's just something that you have to check with your medical school the important thing to know about this is that they're completely independent of each other completely different examiner so when you finish one, you can go into the next one and it doesn't affect the outcome that you had of the previous one. It won't affect the outcome on the future one. It's all about just making good impression in that five or so minutes. What I think is important to know is that in your head, you'll think that five to 10 minutes isn't really a lot of time to express yourself. But when you get in there, you can talk through a lot of things in that seven or eight minutes. And you really have to think about what point you're trying to express. That's what people get into the trap. They think they have to rush through everything and then get to the end and finish early. So that's a positive note. On half of my MMIs, I didn't get a chance to finish. I got stopped halfway. So if you have a lot to talk about, talk about it because they're not gonna sort of disadvantage you because you didn't get through all the prompts they wanna get you through. All they wanna know is see how you think. If, you're, um, if you've got knowledge of a topic, go through it, uh, be logical. Uh, they, they want unique people. They want people that uh, are passionate and have, are driven. What's the purpose of the MMI? So essentially the MMI is trying to discern the most suitable applicants for medical school. And the only way you can do this is by designing a interview panel or an interview station that can test a different range of cognitive and non-cognitive skills. Things like ethical decision making, things like your morals, professionalism, communication skills, ability to problem solve and to critical think, your knowledge of the healthcare system, and your ability to empathize with other people. Those are the really big ones. Those are the ones you have to focus on. But as shown in a University of Calgary study in 2007, they can even test more sort of th things that you wouldn't expect like your uh, advocacy, uh, ambiguity. Uh, so just a quick understanding of what that is. It's, it's dealing with sort of lack of knowledge. In the healthcare system, you're gonna be thrown in a lot of situations where you don't know the answer or you can't explain to a patient why this is and the test result might be a little bit ambiguous but you're gonna be able to sort of accept that and find a way to explain that. There's also gonna be, they also tested things like self-reflection, uh, so introspection, ability to look at your own mistakes, your own decisions throughout your uh, professional and personal life and sort of evaluate what went wrong, what went right and move forward. That's hugely important throughout your career. Okay, so on to the types of stations. This is probably the most important thing that you'll have to know going into the interview. This will really help your chances sort of moving forward if you can understand what exactly they're going to test you on. So the probably the trickiest but the most important is ethical scenarios. But the important thing to know about these ones is that there's no right or wrong answer. There's, there's no correct way to approach it. It's just your own sort of gut instinct and what you believe. Um, for example, a situation might be that they've given you Two patients, a uh, 24 year old male that smokes and a 60 year old male with grandchildren on the way and they're both in need of a liver, trans liver transplant, who do you give it to? Pretty difficult, there will be a lot of other factors between them, but really it just comes down to what you think is right and you have to justify it. Another example is that you're a GP and a patient's come to you and you've now referred them to see a cancer specialist for surgical removal of, of a tumour. And then in the next week, they come back to you saying that they no longer want this treatment because they found this renewed faith and they found a priest who can heal them through non-pharmacological ways. Her husband's with her and, she, and the husband's asking you to talk some sense into, the, um, into, in, into, a, into his wife. What are the issues here? What do you respond to? So these types of questions, um, they're, they're pretty tricky. And the best way to approach them is that just stick with your gut. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, 
talk a bit and just and sort of rationalize what you're thinking and make sense of why you went through this certain way. The next important type of station is communication skills. So this is going to test your ability to explain a scenario to your examiner to be clear in what you're trying to say. The two biggest examples that I could give you is the ability to give instructions. For example, that you might have to talk to a person and get them to fold a piece of origami in a certain way without you looking at what they're doing. Um, another one might be, might be testing detechnicalization. So what that essentially means is breaking down complex ideas into very simple ones. Uh, let me just throw at you like an example. Um, what is a cell? Sounds really easy. Um, probably sounds to you we've got heaps of cells running through our bodies, but being able to explain to a seven-year-old what that means is a lot more difficult than talking to your colleague about what a cell is. And so the ability to take really complex information and give it into a user-friendly, beginner way um, of understanding is a really important skill to have. Another big type of station is acting stations. So these are a lot different to what you're traditionally used to. Instead of a assessor who will sit in front of a desk and ask you questions, the person sitting in front of a desk will be an actor and you'll be given a scenario and you'll have to respond to their, their cues or whatever it is. Uh, it might be a, the actor might be a person in, at a bus stop and they're very frantic because they've forgot their medication. They're asking you to give them some money so they could buy the medication. How, like how would you respond to it on the spot? It could be a patient that's really, really sort of upset because she's got a terminal diagnosis and you're there just to console her, just to sort of give her someone to talk to. These are completely different to what you would be used to and they can really throw you off the spot. The actors are extremely good at what they do and it's very hyper-realistic. So there's really no way to prepare for these ones. The, the best advice that I could give you is that you have to respond naturally, take it seriously. Um, don't treat it like an acting station, treat it like it's a real life situation. That's the, that's the best way to approach them. Another, another important one is analytical skills. They're gonna give you things like graphs, tables, a um, bunch of different results, and you're gonna have to look at them and quickly read through them and understand what's the trend going on. Is, 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 is this disease more prevalent in males or females? Or why do you think that this trend could be rising? Why do you think this trend could be decreasing? So it's a lot of things that you might have been tested in the GAMSAT or other tests already, but um, it's super important because when you're in the field, you're gonna be given a lot of research papers about why this drug is more effective than another one and you're going to have to explain to your patients using statistics and logic why that is. And really another important type of station that they can give you is personal questions. Never rule out that they'll test you on personal qualities, uh, why you want to do medicine, uh, tell a bit about yourself, what are your strengths and weaknesses, um, what's your knowledge of the healthcare system and um, have you had any personal experiences with the healthcare system. So they're always going to want to know a little bit about you and so that's a really important station to keep in mind. And finally, there might be things like picture interpretation. So they'll give you a piece of artwork or they might give you a photo of a patient and you've got to explain what the picture might mean, what's going on in it, how does it make you feel? All right, so what does a station look like? So what generally happens is that you're going to uh, be assigned to a door. So there's gonna be, all the stations are pretty much little rooms and you're gonna be assigned to a door and you're gonna to have to wait there. They'll ring a bell and sometimes you'll be given a prompt on the door, but most of the time you won't be given a prompt. They'll just ring the bell and you go into the room. So you go into the room, there'll be an examiner there, an actor there, you're gonna sit down and there's gonna be a prompt on the table. And on this prompt, there's gonna be a quick stem about what the situation is and there might be a question on it. If there's a question, you're gonna to have to respond to it. So what I suggest is that you take a long time to just sit there, really understand what the stem is, what's going on, and think about how you're gonna answer this properly. A lot of people I find rush into it. They just read the stem and wanna try, talk as much as they can in the seven minutes that they're given. But I advise that you should just take a, take a step back. If, even if it takes you two minutes, three minutes to read this and truly understand it, it's better off and that way you'll have a clear um, sort of response in your head. So once you've done that, you start talking, answering the questions, whatever. Um, as you go through it, the interviewer might ask you a few more questions following on from what you said. So to sort of carry on the conversation and you'll do that for the eight minutes or the 10 minutes, whatever it is. When the bell, when that finishes, the second bell will ring, um, signaling that the interview's finished. You'll thank the interviewer, you'll walk out, um, you'll wait outside and you'll go into the next station. And this repeats itself um, 
however long and you go around in the circuit. So this is, as you can imagine, a very quick process. It happens in the blink of an eye. Um, but what's super important is that when you leave a station, you put it behind you. So what's the difference between a panel interview and a MMI? I'm sure that I've answered that already through what I've said, but a panel interview is very long. It usually lasts upwards of 30 minutes, whereas the MMI is very short, it's succinct, it's quick. There's multiple different interviews in multiple different stations. The panel is usually just one type. Uh, there might be multiple interviewers there. And they'll ask you more rehearsable type questions like, why do you want to be a doctor? Or what experience have you had in healthcare? Um, MMI can really simulate you and put you into an environment that you're not really comfortable with. So they're, they're completely different atmospheres. So what's the evidence to support the use of MMIs in medical school? So a systematic review done by USOF in 2019 showed that the use of MMI actually positively correlated with cognitive skills such as reasoning skills, uh, sorry, reasoning ability and the ability to perform in a simulated environment. It also showed that it correlated with non-cognitive abilities like English proficiency, uh, communication skills and your ability to build um, relationships with people. Another study by Powell et al. 2013 actually showed that the MMI was feasible. Um, it was cost effective, it didn't require more staff or examiners to perform it and went really smoothly. It was also very fair, it was transparent um, and it was free from any sort of interviewer bias. That was the main reason why it was implemented. It was free from gender, socioeconomic and um, cultural bias. But more importantly, it did not favor people that had prior coaching or prior training. So everybody's on the same level playing field and I think that's really um, a positive thing to go on with that you just have to express yourself and be honest with yourself and that'll sort of give you the best chance to move forward and get in. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope I've answered a few of your questions. Um, if I have, can you give me a thumbs up? If I haven't, please ask any questions that you have in the comments below. In the future, I'm gonna be doing a little bit more videos on how to answer specific questions and how to prepare in the weeks leading up to it. But until then, thanks so much for tuning in, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.